Good people, we're finally starting to see cases from the future. Imagine your standard regular configuration, but add six more to that, giving you the exploration rights to do whatever you want in terms of hardware configurations. And that's exactly what the Inwin Mod Free case concept tries to deliver. And I've been using this thing and working with it over the last few days, rebuilding, trying new configurations, trying to find its limitations. And you know, it's not perfect, but I'm really excited to see where this is getting, where this is heading, where this is going to be. So this is the mod-free concept case. It's developed by Inwin and knowing what type of crazy cases they've released in the past, I'm kind of happy to see this coming out from them. And huge thanks to Inwin for partnering with us and making this whole experience possible. It's the world's first fully modular enclosure. And that comes with its own set of challenges, like a thousand little panels that give you flexibility in the long term, but it's something you have to face in the now in terms of being able to cover every single pa panel and element on the exterior, regardless of the configuration you choose. So you are looking at about three panels of the exterior per module. So you add them all together and yeah, it's a lot of panels. At its core, we have three modules. So the mod one is the motherboard area, the core of your PC case. We have the mod two, which is the power supply area, the storage area, which is the same length and width as the mod one. And then we have the mod three, which is the same width and height as the mod two, but it's longer to accommodate all your full tower experimentations. The reason why this is so exciting is that you're no longer locked to a particular hardware configuration for your case. So for example, if you don't want the traditional layout with the power supply at the bottom and the motherboard and everything up top, move the power supply chamber to the top, <laughs> the classic traditional method. But also you can move that whole power supply chamber to the front or the back of the enclosure, depending again on what you're kind of going for, uh, slightly lower height. And you can also rotate that core in the mod one because it's a square, you can rotate it to go either in uh, vertical mode for the GPU and for that vertical uh, airflow, or you can even inverse the whole thing if you like to display your system on the left side with all the components visible on the right. Be ready to be captivated by a fusion of vivid colors, deeper blacks, and a wicked fast 240 hertz refresh rate with Corsair's Xenion Flex gaming monitor. Featuring the world's first bendable OLED display in a stunning 45 inch WQHD ultra wide aspect ratio, immerse yourself in gaming and other productive tasks. You get all the extra goodies for ultimate speed and precision within a game, get quick access to a few USB ports at the front and plenty of other display connectivity options at the back. And all this tech is backed with their advanced burn-in protection and a three-year warranty. If you're looking to flex your gaming setup, look no further than Corsair Xenion Flex. Learn more down below. That means you have at least six configurations from just two modules. I mean, that's pretty sick, isn't it? And then when you introduce the longer mod three module, that's when things get even more interesting, allowing you to expand that core uh, layout to uh, support 360s at the top or the sides, or you can even stack them on top of each other. I don't know why you would do that, but you can. So this whole concept introduces two questions, why and how. The why is pretty straightforward, right? Like experimentation, allowing you to reconfigure the case, let's say in the future, if you upgrade your GPU, if you want to add more airflow focus direction without the bling, or going the vice versa, reintroducing 360s or 420 mm radiators with the additional of those larger panels, for example. And I'm sure based on the success uh, and the positivity of this whole concept, we'll hopefully see more experimentation and different modules from Inwin in the future, because right now we only have the three. And the how is also very important and Inwin did the right thing of introducing a completely toolless design of installing and removing modules. So we have the slide-in system. There are four screws on each side where a module can be installed. Also fun fact, you can remove those screws and reposition them to, let's say a different side if you want to completely you know, rotate certain modules, whatever. And then there's the secure clip system at the back that allows the two pieces to join together and stay together unless you depress the clip and remove the whole thing. Now, before actually assembling things, I would recommend you play around with the modules on their own to understand what goes into making sure they're securely attached if you're playing just with two modules or multiple. There's also an interactive assembly guide. This is the first one of its kind that I see. I'm not a huge fan. I prefer a traditional good quality paper assembly manual, for example, but none of that exists with the, with the mod free, which is a little strange. 
because everything else about the enclosure in terms of like, you know, putting them together once you do it once, it's kind of self-explanatory, but also the enclosure is, is very basic in terms of, let's say, removing the panels, it's all push pins. And if you've ever built a computer before, this would feel quite familiar. Now the build quality is steel, all the modules feel robust. I would prefer them to be slightly more lower profile because once you have two modules in place, it feels like you are wasting a little bit of that space around all the framing. And we have the metal mesh, we have the TG, we have two fan brackets, so one large one that is only compatible with the Mod 3 module, but it will support 360s and 420 rads. And we have the smaller one that is for the Mod 1 and the Mod 2 modules that is 240 and 280 only. The thing is, you have some flexibility with the fan bracket on the Mod 1 module, like being able to install it on either of the three sides, but it's installed right in the center. So you don't have that much flexibility on like, you know, radiator, offsets and clearances, so just keep that in mind. Which is strange because the entire frame is open in when you couldn't have, you know, done your magic to give us some additional flexibility on radiator mounting, come on. And so with the whole modular concept come a few innovative modular pieces. So like the dust filter for uh, underneath your power supply is large enough, but that whole front section can be removed completely if you are just going with the mod one and mod two modules and without introducing anything longer in the mod three category, which is pretty unique. The side temper glass with the IO cutout is fully modular in its orientation installation. So you can install it facing up front or the bottom because the IO, the actual module can be also installed anywhere on the frame, which is awesome because regardless of how you orientate the mod one module. You don't have to worry about the IO facing the wrong way. The case feet can be installed on any side of the frame. Just make sure to pop out the rubber, which is not adhesive and it covers one of the screws. They can be for your traditional system or slightly extended for the, the larger configuration. And they also hold the dust filter. So regardless of where you install them, you don't have to worry about dust filtration at the bottom. And because the mod two module, the power supply module is completely open. So at first I thought like, wait a second, there's not even the power supply shroud, you know, all the cables are visible. But then I thought, okay, well, if you're reconfiguring the system, after everything's assembled, it's actually quite simple because all the cables are right there for your, you know, navigation and handling. Navigation? More like routing. <laughs> navigation. Now, both the basic and the deluxe editions come with these 140mm Jupiter RGB fans with a fan hub included at the back for up to eight devices that will control both the lighting and your speed, which is fantastic. And the entire assembly almost brings you back to the basics and the core because, for example, you have to install motherboard standoffs because uh, you can either go for ATX or EATX, so you kind of choose. And then it's really up to your imagination how you want to configure the modules. I love the vertical uh, GPU, for example, with the power supply at the bottom, mounting some fans uh, as exhaust on the backside to help with GPU cooling. Keep standard CPU tower in there for that's gonna be enough. You know, it's gonna be an exhausting fan there already. So the CPU side's taken care of and the GPU side's taken care of as well. Now storage is something that's not exactly overlooked, but it's not ideal here. So with additional bracket, you can install hard drives or SSDs into the Mod 2 module. Perhaps the modding community <laughs> ironically can design something that would allow you to stack hard drives or SSDs in the Mod 2 uh, chamber. But otherwise, I would say like that's the weakest part of the whole concept, but hopefully is gonna you know spread its wings and develop some additional characteristics and etc. Also, GPU compatibility is very decent, especially with the additional module and massive CPU tower heatsink and height is available because the whole thing is pretty wide. Now, to be fair and slightly critical, how likely are you to, you know, go back in after a finished system and change the orientation of the mod one module, for example? You know, it requires a little bit of planning, a little bit of work as well, but it's fairly easy to do from the module perspective, and I'm really happy about that. Now, once the system is assembled, it's not the cleanest thing in the world, cable management-wise, just because the cables don't immediately go to the back, but you have to go from the Mod 2 module into the Mod 1 and use those rubber grommets and etc. But it's doable. We have plenty of cable tie points all around the back, so you can do a very easy job to make sure everything is still nicely secured. But with the whole dual chamber craze that's going on right now, how awesome would it be if one of the corners was removable so you can take it off and have a dual chamber-like enclosure on that side? And that's 
where I think Inwin has a potential to come up with a version 2.0 that incorporates, you know, a lot more modularity, slimming down on all the parts so things that are not so bulky, giving you a little bit more creative freedom on the paneling patterns, materials, colors, and all those stuff because the infinite upgrades promise is only strong and only relies on Inwin's commitment to making sure this whole concept is moving forward in terms of the additional products, good prices and being competitive in the design direction and etc. So I'm really curious to see how this thing plays out in the next few years. Just imagine different textures and fabrics, wood, different colored plastics because all the panels are so easily interchangeable. I mean, the options are so exciting. I can't wait to see what happens next. Because let's be real, in when this is way too boring, this is way too overdone, the mechanism's awesome, just need to apply it to something else. Now, I feel like the mod-free concept does not stop here. Hopefully, we'll see different modules and different expansions, DLC packs, as, as you might want to call them, for the mod-free, but I feel like the mod-free concept would be the strongest in an open-frame chassis just so that you can eliminate all the exterior panels and really open up the creativity to design different shapes for the exterior. So it doesn't have to be, you know, traditional looking enclosure, but something that we've seen from Inman in the past that has curves, that has maybe different materials. And that's exactly what I want to see. But this, I would say, is a really good start, you know? Now I got to figure out how I want to build with this thing later. If you have any thoughts or ideas, let me know in the comments. I'm Dimitri. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you in the next video.